again, the Father, I do come to you in the precious name of Jesus, and I do thank you, Lord, for this day. And, Lord, I ask you, Lord, to hide me behind the cross. And I pray, Lord, that you be magnified, that you be lifted up. You say, Lord, if you draw, you say, if you be lifted up, you'll draw all men unto thee. And, Lord, I just want to uh, commit uh, two people to you, Lord. I want to commit uh, Pastor, Pastor Miles, Lord. He's in uh, ICU, and, Lord, he's on he's on the ventilator. And, Lord, I'm asking you, Lord, to undertake for him, Lord, for complete recovery and for his family, comfort, and strength. And then, Lord, I also like to uh, uh, commit to you, Lord, uh, Diana, uh, which is one of my co-workers. Her, uh, her daughter has uh, uh, contracted uh, uh, COVID, and uh, she, she, she's, she's positive. And I'm asking, Lord, that you undertake for her and her family for a complete recovery. So, Lord, I just want to thank you for what you're going to do. And I'm be careful you to praise the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name, I pray and get thanks. Uh, thanks. Uh, I would like for you to pray over the, uh, pray for these two people, the Pastor uh, Pastor Miles and uh, Diana, who is my coworker, uh, her daughter. Both of them, both of them have COVID, and Pastor Miles is on the ventilator. So I just want to thank you for that and ask you to pray for them. In Jesus' name, I pray and get thanks. Amen. Pray the Lord, saints. We're going we're gonna to go ahead and get started, but I do want to say thank I pray the Lord for the Word Sunday. Pray the Lord for the Word Sunday. And uh, I know that when it rains, if we're going to pray for rain, I know we need to get our umbrella. Amen? Yeah, if it's going to rain, we need to pray. Our, we need to get our umbrella because we be praying what? In faith. Amen? So pray the Lord for the Word Sunday that we have. Amen? So we're going to start tonight on praying for those in, uh, that are in authority. Praying for those that are in authority. And, uh, but holding to the Word of God. We pray for those in authority, but we stand on the Word of God no matter what, no matter what. So I'd like to read a few uh, scriptures from First uh, First Timothy, First Timothy chapter 2, First Timothy chapter 2, and I begin in verse 1, and said, I exhort thee, uh, I exhort therefore uh, that ye that first of all, supplication, prayers, and intercession, and, and giving of things, be made for all men. For kings, and that's what we want, we want to zero in on, for kings and all those that are in authority, that we may live, that we may lead uh, a quiet and peaceful life. In, in, uh, in godliness and honesty. For, uh, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. Wherefore, I mean, who will, who will help all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth? For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. And uh, we want to zero in on that area. Uh, on Sundays, I'm, I'm speaking on uh, we must become one. We must become one. I'm speaking on Sunday. And I'd like to use that objective that I have on Sundays and bring it over here because. Uh, uh, we were taking it from, uh, we might become one from uh, John chapter 17. And uh, there is a lot of division, especially around the United States. I know it's around the world too, but mainly uh, talking about the United States. And uh, I'm not talking about the hustlers, the gamblers, the dope boys, uh, the pimps, the prostitutes. I'm not talking about them. Who I'm talking about is our, our Christians, and uh, there is a, a division among Christians, and Satan is so slick that uh, he is called a division. But we want to uh, take hold of God's word and become one, one. But that scripture said there's one God, one God, and one mediator. 
between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Now we have a lot of power. We have more power than we than we realize. But by division, when division comes in, excuse me, we forget all about that. And we start concentrating on our uh, every head with the objective over there. We must become one. What I believe, what I think, this is how I feel, this is how I see it. Now, all of that needs to be crucified. All of that needs to be crucified. Uh, how I feel, how I think, what I believe, this is the way I see it. We need to go to what I call my Shinsu country, St. John's B30. For he must increase and I must decrease. And all born again Christians need to become one. There's one God and one mediator between God and man, God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Now we're starting tonight, but what we're going to do, uh, we're going to go over to uh, Daniel chapter 3 next time. And uh, we're going to still pray for those in authority, but we cannot compromise the word of God. We must stand on the word of God. But we need to pray for those in authority. Uh, it says kings and all of those that are in authority. Uh, they need to be saved. They need to be born again. And uh, I know that some people might say, well, I'm not going to vote for this lady. I'm not going to vote for this man because I, I can't stand him and all this old kind of stuff. And the other side said, I like him, I like her and all that. Listen, we can forget all that. We need to come and do like the Lord said. We need to pray for those in authority, uh, starting with kings and all those that are in authority. We need to pray for them. They all are to all out of this self. They, that, they need to be crucified, decreased. And the word of God needs to be uh, take hold of. We need to pray for uh, the president, Regardless of how you feel. How you feel don't have anything to do with it. What you think don't have nothing to do with it. How you feel, what you believe don't have nothing to do with it at all. And how you see things don't have nothing. What we need to do as one body is to pray for those in authority. Because what happens is when a person gets saved, the scripture says, Therefore, if any man born born real being Christ, they are new creatures. They can get they can get born again and come a, a brand new person. And then it says come to a saving knowledge <coughs> of the truth. They get in God, they get in God's word and find out what the truth is. The truth about everything. Everything. And uh, that is what we should do. We should pray uh, for men in authority, but we must uh Stand on the word of God. And my prayer is that we be we be one. If we're not one, Satan has got in there and he is called habit. But we can uh the scripture says resist the devil and he'll flee from us. If we stand on the word of God, we stand on the word of God, he'll flee from us. And uh we'll be we'll pray for uh especially like up in Congress. That for men and women, uh, that they get saved, get born again. And then the ones who are saved, that they make a stand on the word of God and not their own understanding. For the president, pray they get saved. But God, how you feel, forget that. We are obligated to pray for those that are in authority. But we must stand on the word of God. And what we'll do, we'll, we'll go over to Daniel chapter 3. Uh, next time we look at the Hebrew God and um, we'll see what they did. And what they did is what we must do. And this is a wicked time. I mean, this is a wicked time. There's killing everywhere, uh, stealing everywhere. I know uh, in California they said that uh, I think the uh, $950 is a, is a misdemeanor now. And I think they said that the uh, the boys who steal, they go in, they go in there with a calculator. And when they get to the about 940, they said, we got enough right now. And they walk on out of the store with all the stuff. Because ain't nothing going to happen to them. So the world is getting wicked. and getting dangerous. 
and people are killing people like, like I don't know what. And uh, all heaven is going on, but we need to take hold of God's word. And uh, he told us that go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We must uh, look up to Jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith. And uh, we, we are not to get entangled entangled with the affairs of this life. And I think many of us have gotten entangled. And that's where what I think, what I believe, how I feel coming comes in. And we need to put that thing. That thing needs all that need to be crucified. And I'll talk again about that when I speak the next time on Sunday. But we must make a stand on the word of God. Because the scripture says on Acts 5 29, rather to obey God rather than men. We ought to stand on this book right here. Yes, we ought to pray for those in authority and pray that they get saved. And the one that uh, spreads up in Congress, uh, they, they, they grown men and women. Most of them are educated, like lawyers and doctors up in Congress. That's who up in Congress. They're very educated, but men, sometimes they can get ashamed. And they won't stand on the word of God. Uh, the scripture said over in uh, Romans 1 16, I believe, he said, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God. And if we want to know what the power of God is, it is the gospel that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, that he was buried, and that he rose from the dead. And the scripture said that all men, that all men be saved. Same way we got saved. Uh, if you tell the truth and thank God for his word, he said, uh, thy sins and iniquity, he will remember no more. He wrote uh, 10, 17. Thank God for that. Thank God for the shed blood. Because, listen, we didn't drop out of heaven. Somebody had to pray for us. And we need to pray for, for uh, the kings, the presidents, the governors, the congressmen, the senators, and we need to pray that they get born again, that they get saved, and we need to pray for the for the for the word of God to go out through all the United States and around the world. We need to pray that people get saved, but they need to hear the word of God so they can get saved. And if they hear the word of God and what God says in His Word, what He says about salvation, what He says about sin. Uh, the scripture says when the Holy Spirit comes, he will approve the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. And we need to um, hold to God's word. And uh, what I think, what I believe, how I feel, forget that. Satan is all in that. But if we uh, become one, we'll come to God's word. And he said, pray for kings and all those in authority. All those. Regardless of how you feel or how I feel, we pray for those that are in authority so they can get saved. I think it was a man. Uh, he was in one of the uh, one of the cabinets, and he got mixed up with some, some kind of stuff, and he went to prison. And I uh, just can't think of his name right now. But we went to some of his uh, his meetings, and uh, he started the. Uh, prison and jail ministry. Now I think it went all overseas too. But he got born again. He got saved. And he was able to witness to, to many people up high that we couldn't even get to. And that's how uh, the Lord, that's how God's word works. God can save to the uttermost. And he can save uh, where Congress, the president, or whoever the president is, whoever the members of Congress, they can be going down the wrong road. But once we pray for them and they get saved, born again, he said that they be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And the Bible says in John 17, 17, thy word is true. So we just want to uh, start there uh, tonight that we pray for those in authority, regardless of how we believe. Put all that in the trash can. What I think. What's your thought on that? That's what you hear on television. They said something, 
with your authority. How you see that? Give me a break. Let's come here and see what he says. And whatever he says is right. We don't have to guess on that. So I just want to uh, leave that with you. And next time we are, um, we are pick up and we are. Um, but I do want to say that um, when we spoke last time on Daniel, we went to First King chapter eight. And when you go to First King chapter eight, Solomon prayed just about for everybody. I mean, he prayed for everybody. If they got in this sin, we and look toward this place where you forgive foreigners. I mean, he prayed for foreigners. He prayed for everybody, just about. So uh, that's what the Lord wants us to do. But not only does he want us to pray, but then he wants us to walk before him like he told Solomon. He said, okay, Solomon, I heard you pray, but now I want you to walk before me. And that's what the Lord wants us to do. So we'll pick up next time. Uh, we'll, we'll pick up here, and we'll go over to uh, Daniel chapter 3, where we pray for all men, but we must make a stand on God's word. In other words, what I mean by that, that is, we do not compromise. What we stand on the word of God, no matter what. Now, there may be someone who listens tonight, and we're talking about praying for all men, all women, all children. If you're not saved, God wants you to be saved. That all men be saved. Saved today. The gospel is the death, the burial, and the resurrection. That the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. That he was buried, that he rose from the dead. And you can get saved. He loves you. God loves you. There's nothing you have done where God said, I don't love you. He loves you and he wants to save you. But you got to open that door so he can come in. He said in Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man, woman, boy, or girl, hear my voice and open the door. He said, I'll come in. I died on the cross for your sins. I paid the, the sin debt in full. I died for all your sins. So you can pray a prayer like this and Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sins. I believe that you died on the cross for my sin, that you were buried, and that you rose from the dead. Now, if you pray that prayer, he'll come in and save you. He'll come in and save you. So I'm going to close right here. Uh, let's pray. Dear my Father, I do thank you for your grace and mercy. And Lord, I pray, Lord, that your word, Lord, found a large place in our hearts, Lord, that we may meditate on your word. In Jesus' name I pray and give thanks. Amen.